today we're gonna start talking about supernatural and this is what I see people make two mistakes when they talk about supernatural the first one when they overemphasize overemphasize about supernatural how they overemphasize whatever is going on in the physical world they say it's demons right if they see a wreck or a car accident they would say demons there and we say that something happened and they blame demons and they see demons maybe it was just driver's neglect but people would say you know and they see demons behind every single bush right it's one mistake but another mistake when people um, not over but under emphasize under emphasize spiritual things or supernatural they say you know it's just a normal world and right now it's common sense and everything there is some logic behind that and they explain everything with your with our common sense with our minds and the knowledge that we have and we know it's another mistake why because we understand that we are not alone on this planet right we are not alone here so that's why we uh, during the next couple of weeks we're gonna get biblical perspective biblical do you like biblical perspective amen so we're gonna talk about biblical perspective on um, supernatural things amen and the sermon that I decided to name the name of this sermon would be the most real reality the most real reality and the first point that I'd like to talk today is the unseen world the unseen world and we're gonna read in second uh, Corinthians 4 18 what Bibles what Bible tell us about the unseen world so we fix our eyes on not on what is seen but on what is unseen for what is seen is temporary but what is what is unseen is eternal so Bible clearly tell us that there is two different worlds two different one which one the first one that we can see we can touch we see it right and the second world is which we cannot see it's two different worlds and we already know that we don't see many things in our world right we don't see wind but we know it exists we didn't see it we don't see radio waves but we know it exists we didn't see internet but we use it right we don't see it but we use it we don't see cold but we know it exists so we already know that some things that we don't see already exist uh, and uh, today so I'd like to tell that we don't see many things but it doesn't say that it's not real it's real we don't see it so I'm talking about unseen world the real reality the reality is that we don't see many things that exist this is the reality that we live in sometimes we see angels right angels can appear right in the middle of the room for example right or we heard about UFOs different weird stuff really weird stuff right they can appear right in the middle of something can we say whoa no it's not possible it's something supernatural right this is how we see it but some science said that there is more than three dimensions we know that the fourth dimension is what time some scientists they said there is 11 dimensions another science they said there is 21 different dimensions I'm not sure exactly how many their dimensions but I know we live in this three or four dimensional world right with time 
And sometimes those things that appear, we say, whoa, it's something supernatural. It's something like, it's, it cannot be. And for, for creatures from 3D world, they are superior to the creature from 2D world. Right? They are superior. So they can do more things. So it's exactly the same that going on with us living in 3D world. And we know that some creatures who belong to 5, 7, 21 dimensions, they can appear and they kind of superior to us. They can appear, change shape. They can do many things that we would say, it's something super, it's not real. It's not real for us because we live in 3D world. But the real reality, that it's real. It doesn't mean that we don't see it, but it's real. For example, just recently, my wife, she sent me a picture of our kids to my cell phone. In just a second, I see my kids on my cell phone. And I'm like, whoa, that's cool. And I didn't see any picture flying in. <laughs> I didn't see it, right? I didn't see. And there was no wire, you know. For people, let's say, 100 years ago, it was like, it's a supernatural. It's not real for a picture to appear here without anything, just appear, you know. Not real. So, it's exactly the same that we see many things around us. So, uh, my main thing that sometimes we don't see it, but it doesn't mean that it's not real. It's real. It's real. Not everything that we can see with our eyes is the things that we say it's something not real. We don't see many things, but it's real. For example, when you pray... When you pray, you don't see any streams coming inside of you, right? You don't see it? Or do you? We don't. But we feel something inside of us. When we pray, our heart feels with something. We feel differently. After the prayer, something changes in our life. Why? Because we don't see things, but it's real. We see power coming in our life. We see strength coming in our life when we pray. Why? Because it's real. Amen? So the first point was the unseen world. The unseen world is real. Amen? Second point that I'd like to talk today about, the battle. The battle that we have. And the second Corinthians 4, 10, 3, 4, we read about that. For though we live in the world, we do not wage the war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Interesting, right? So, again, we see that there is a, two different worlds here. The spirit world, world and the natural world. In the natural world, we have different weapons. In the spiritual world, we have different weapons. And we know that there is a constant 24-hour, 24-7 war or battle going on. Even, even when we come to church, the war is going on. When we go have fun, the war is going on. When we go to bed, the war is real. And the war between... Kingdom of God versus kingdom of darkness. We don't see it, but we know it's real. And in, the, in this unseen world, we do not fight with uh, nuclear bombs. Do we? We don't fight with uh, machine guns. We do not fight with uh, anything else. We do not fight with tanks. It's two different worlds. And we need to understand that the war is real too. 
It's not just the fairy tale with all that, right? It's real. And maybe some of you feel it. And maybe some of you feel it right now. During last week, you felt something going against you. And also, another thing that I'd like all of us to understand that whatever we have, whatever we have in physical world, it's a result of what happened before that in unseen world. It's a result of something happened before that in unseen world. For example, we see an accident and we, we can say, you know, it's just an accident. But we don't really know what really happened before that in time. Maybe the protection was lifted up. Right? Maybe those people, they wanted to do something for God. And the enemy was not happy about that. So he decided to kill them. Right? Or maybe it was just the neglect. Neglect of the driver. We don't really know. But something happened before that. For us to understand that a little bit better, I'd like to illustrate with uh, some graphic. Let's say it's timeline, and we have two different worlds, physical world and the unseen world. And let's say the story about Good Samaritan. So the first picture was Good Samaritan helping the poor guy. He was like kneeling and helping the guy. And uh, this is the result that we see in the physical world. The guy, he's helping the poor man. But before he decided to help, before that moment in the physical world, something happened in the unseen world. Right? Before that. We don't know. It was a second before. Maybe a day before. Maybe one hour before. We don't know. But something happened before that. And this is the second picture. In the unseen world, he was like fighting those thoughts. One thought said, you know what? You need to help the guy. You need to help because he's a poor guy and you have, you know, good heart. So just kneel and help and take care of him. One thought. And maybe another thought came to his mind was, you know, you're very busy. Just continue on your journey. Just do whatever you need to do. You, you're a busy man. You have a lot of things to do. Maybe this little voice. Some of you might call it little demon. Right? On the left side. <laughs> usually. <laughs> you know. You never know. But could be. That's why we are getting a little weird. But not too much. <laughs> So, and in reality, the battlefield is in our mind between those thoughts. And it's real. The thoughts, it's not something that, not real, it's real. Thoughts which comes from outside. Sometimes God will tell you something. The Holy Spirit will tell you something. Angels will help you in something. And they will send a thought but you hear something different on another side. So that's why he was battling and he won the battle. He won the battle. So that's why he, in the physical world, he kneeled and helped the poor guy. And the next question, why he won the battle? Why? How come he won? Because before that, in physical world, he invested something. He invested his time in praying, reading the Bible. He invested time and said, Lord, I want to be like you. Help me. Give me strength. Lord, I want to be like you. I want to fight. I want to be strong. Just give it to me. He was renewing his mind. He was renewing his mind on the right thoughts. He was thinking about the right thoughts. He didn't um, let the devil speak into his mind, take control of his mind. He was constantly renewing his mind. So that's why he was strong. So that's why when in the unseen world, 
Satan said something to him. You are busy. You need to go. He said, no. I know what I need to do. So that's why he kneeled and helped. So this is how it happened in the battle. Whatever we have in our life right now, in the, our physical world right now, something happened before that in the unseen world. We need to clearly understand that. Whatever we have in our families, whatever we have in our finances, whatever we have in our health, something happened before that in the unseen world. And why it's happened in the unseen world? Because something happened before that in the physical world. And we have this type of, you know, connection that we go through. And if we want to change something, we need to change it step by step. And in the result, we'll see totally different person. Totally different atmosphere. Totally different family. This is, this is how it works. So we need to understand the spiritual battle and how it works. Amen? And uh, we need to understand that in the battle, we have weapons to fight with also. As I said, we are not fighting with nuclear bombs or anything else. We are fighting with two weapons. The first one is the word of God. Amen. The word, the sword that we have. The sword, the word that we have inside of us and we use it. We use it. When you say right things, when you preach right things, when you just release right things, right attitude, you, you say right things. We know that uh, words, they have creative power. We know that. So that's why the uh, word of God has creative power. When God spoke, something appeared. It's exactly what is going on in our lives. When you have inside of you something, you speak right things. This is, this is the weapon that we have. I know we are, we are talking about positive confessions, many things. We know that. But it's a good thing. It's right thing. Sometimes people would say, you know, you just speak it and that's it. No, you need to receive it. The word of God should live inside of you. Then you say it in its totally different way. Totally different anointing coming. Why? Because you say it from inside of you. And if you are empty inside, what you can say? You can say empty words. If you say something that you have inside, you're full of the power of God, anointing of God. You say it. That it has totally different power. So that's why we need the word, the sword that we need to use. It's the first weapon that we use. And the second weapon is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is not just the liquid. It's a weapon. We sometimes we think about blood as like a liquid or something, you know, like something. It's a weapon. And we know that. Right? When we pray in the name of Jesus and we plead blood of Jesus over our lives, something happening. Over our situation, something is happening. So that's why I always encourage people just pray in the name of Jesus. Plead blood of Jesus over your kids, over your situation, over your family. And we don't see it. We don't see the blood coming, right? Blood coming. <laughs> but in reality... Something is coming. And we need to understand this and use the weapon. And the last point that I'd like to make today is the, the enemy. The enemy. The enemy. It's a bad news. But we have an, we have an enemy. We have an enemy. Each one of us. We have an enemy. His name is Satan, devil. And we have to recognize that, that we have an enemy. And it's okay. Amen? Why? Because this is how the, it, it's going on. And I'd like to read John 10. And I'd like for us to understand the enemy plan. Apostle Paul said, we know how he works. We know how he fights. So sometimes we need to know how he is fighting against us. 
In John 10.10 10 it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. So first of all, what, this is how it's happening. He comes to steal something. Before he kills, he steals something. And as we know, he loves divorces. But usually he starts with stealing something. He steals romance, right? He steals some respect. He steals something from the relationship. Steal. Steal the respect, the love. He steals this first. Then he kills the whole marriage, family. It's not just starting with something, you know, boom, and you are divorced. No. If you trace any divorce into the beginning, you'll see some stealing going on. So we need to see the stealing, and we need to guard right there. If, if he's stealing respect, I need to fight and keep the respect of my husband. If you feel like he's stealing romance and love, so we need to keep and say, I need to renew my mind. I need to renew my feelings and keep the love to my wife. Then we're going to be all right in our families. And also we know that he wants to devour our kids, right? He wants. This is the bad news, but he wants. And we need to understand this. And how he's going to steal and kill them. He's going to steal some faith, confidence, right? Beliefs, some attitudes. He'll steal some, right? He'll steal sound mind, right? Self-control, self-control. Then he'll propose some worldly stuff, worldly things, right? Like pornography, like sex, like whatever the world can propose, wealth and, you know, whatever. And he proposing. And he wants to hook up them with those things. And some people get really addicted to this. And in the end, we see the result. Like this thing happening, in the end, we see the result. Life broken. It's really, really difficult to restore now. Because it's get into really, really big things. So that's why we need to understand that the war is going on. Or sometimes you want to preach the word of God to somebody. You want to share your testimony with somebody. And you are ready to share. And you said, right now I'm going to talk and I'm going to tell about God. All the story about Jesus, I'm going to just tell. And you st start sharing and suddenly... Cell phone rings, right? And you're like, ah, oh, it's normal. Why? Because the battle is going on. The enemy is working. Amen? He, this is how he does. This is how he does. First one, he blinds the mind of people. He blinds the mind of people, right? Sometimes you... Talk to the person, and you feel like there is a wall, wall, bomb, bomb, wall. And you, you don't know what to say, right? And you say something, and it's not there. You're like, ah, huh? really? There is a wall. Why? He blinds, blinds. Amen? And even sometimes your mind will go wandering, especially during sermons. Like this one, huh? <laughs> and you feel like, and you are thinking about lunch. <laughs> or you're thinking about what? Trash that you need to take care of when you get home, right? Or whatever. So this is his work. This is how it works. He want to steal the word that you receive it. He want to steal your attention at least 50%. Not, maybe not 100%, because you still hear. You still hear something. But at least 50%. I want to get. That's how he thinks. What, what else he does? He loves to uh, set traps to ensnare us. 
he is setting traps to ensnare us. This is how he does. This is, how, this is the bad news that we need to understand. There is a trap everywhere where you, where you go. And we need to understand this. Also, he, loves, he also loves to fight to stop us. He loves to fight to stop us. For example, after, sometimes after conference or a service, we coming out, we are full of energy, spiritual, and we say, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to build my marriage. We're going to be happy family. It's going to be everything perfect, you know. I'm, we're going to pray together. We're going to be about Jesus. Every, and you are full of decision. And you come home. And suddenly, some of you are like, doing God. I see it. I see it. Suddenly, something is going on, right? And you have a fight of the decay, right? Why? Because you have the decision. And you decided something. Or sometimes we decide, you know, we need to get, be a good stewards. We need to get free. And we decided, this is what, this is what we're going to do. And you come home and you tell your wife, or your, this, is, this is how we're going to live now. And the next morning, car explodes. <laughs> Anybody had it? Or something happened. Why? Because he wants to stop you. Make you unable to do something for God, for your family. Because this is his tactic. This is how he works. But the good news, my friends, the good news that we come, we can come to the throne of God and receive mercy and grace and power to fight against him. We have the ability and you have the ability to come to the throne of God and receive it, accept this. Something will come, you will not see it, but you will feel it. You will become stronger and stronger and you will be able to see this and fight that. Because we have big power. And he said, this is my mercy. This is my grace. This is my blood that you can use. Just use it. Use it. And I'll be with you. I'll be fighting with you. And I'll send angels on behalf of you to fight your battle. Because you are my son. And you want to live for me. And you want to do something. This is the real things that we can use in the name of Jesus. Amen.